hole. What's happening, guys? Hope you are well. Had a good day today, as always. Hope your drop day was good. Stellar. It was a tough one today. With, um... Oh, I'm never going to be able to pronounce the word. What type of cards they were. You know, the... The, um... Lenticular... It's not holographic. Um, but... But yeah, I don't know if my video is lagging. It looks like it is. I think it is lagging pretty bad. So I might have to turn it off. It might just be a voiceover. Which is all good. But yeah, I'll see how it goes for another couple of seconds. See if it sorts itself out. And if not, I'll just turn it off and I'll just sort of talk over some of the stuff that I was wanting to talk about today with you guys. Just wait a wee sec here, let me sort my levels. for a cup of tea. <laughs> that is quite a cup. Two cups. Because it's too heavy. But yeah. It's kind of slow. I don't know. If any of you guys pop into the live chat, let me know. I can see that the music move is moving in time. But the cam ain't. I wonder if I turn it off on my, my mic. My mic keeps going. So yeah, might have to do this. But okay. Should we just kick off? So I really have been thinking in the past, the past couple of weeks about what sort of format format I enjoy, um, what format I enjoy sharing and learning information when it comes to Vivi. Um, yeah, and I think the the free flowing conversation is definitely definitely what I prefer to like a more structured sort of info video type situation um so yeah i'm gonna give i'm gonna give you guys a piece of what i've kind of been looking at today and yeah starting with the original the og of ogs when it comes to vivi and when it comes to Actually, looking back at it, like digital art, um, when it first started, like emerging, using Flash um, and Photoshop, way back in the day. This is how, uh, and and again, I need to clear this up with you guys. We have been, I think, a lot of us have been pronouncing um, Simone's name wrong. It's actually Simone. And I believe his second name is Simone Lenio. Lenio? 
rather than legno. I think the G is silent. So Simone Legno. Um, yeah, got his start um, creating the 2D characters that we see here. So this huge array, right, of, of characters that him and his co-founder have curated together for, I think it's been about 15 years these guys have been working together, which is super interesting. So they have, you know, they've created a very good working relationship and um, have clearly very similar goals in mind when it comes to like artistic design and marrying that with media and fashion and all sorts of different um all sorts of different what's the word um like items and things that we can collect and, and buy and invest in so yeah, I'm going to read you guys a little bit of this about Simone Legno. Okay. So, Simone Legno is a co-founder and chief creative officer of Tokidoki, which was born in Rome, Italy. And he was born in Rome, Italy. Legno drew incessantly as a child. The boxes of chewed, broken and unshapen pencils he adored as a kid were the beginnings of a passion for art that led to, event to the eventual creation of Tokidoki. Tokidoki means sometimes in Japanese. Lenyo, who always had a deep love of Japanese, or sorry, of Japan and a fascination with this world's culture. And chose the word because he feels that everyone waits for moments that change one's destin destiny. And by chance, or by meaning, or by meeting a new person. Simone's special moment arrived when his designs drew attention of entrepreneur. I'm so sorry, I'm going to pronounce your name wrong. Pune, Ma um, mm, you guys know what it says. And Ivan Arnold, who spied on the artist who spied on the art of his personal website and convinced him to move to LA and begin a global brand. Incredible. Tokidoki has collaborated with many brands such as Carl Lagerfeld, Guggenheim Museum, Sephora, Le Sportica, um, I can't pronounce that, something on, on Tiger Marvel, <laughs> Uh, New Era, Hello Kitty, Fujitsu, Levi's, Xbox, T-Mobile, Medicom Toy, um, MLB, Barbie, and Canon. That is quite an array of collaborations and partnering, partnering up with T-Mobile. Medicom Toy, you know that's a good one. That's one that we all know. Simone has come become a sought oh, sorry Simone Simone has become a sought after speaker around the world at museums, universities, and conferences. Um, from MOCA to the Adobe Max Conference, Flash Film Festival, Art Center, College of Design, Apple Store in Osaka, um, in oh god, in Strudo, oh god, no chance, STG. STGCC and Grafica Milana. Wow. So, the, you know, these guys, this is a dream team right here. This is the creative mind and this is the the, um, the engine and the fuel behind the connections. I feel like these are the artists and this is like David Yu with his licensing deals and everything. Oh no, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, but we'll go for it. Pune, I'm not even going to say the second name, CEO and co-founder of Tokidoki is a serial entrepreneur at heart. Tokidoki is her third company to date. Since its inception, Pune has overseen the growth of Tokidoki into a global lifestyle brand, which has amassed a cult-like following 
for its larger than life characters, mega watt partnerships, and diverse array of products, ranging from handbags to collectibles to slot machines. Wow. In 1995, uh, Pune co founded Hard Candy Inc., a, co- a color cosmetics company that revolutionized the nail enamel cosmetic industries worldwide. In 1999, Pune successfully sold hard candy to LVMH oh wow wow Moe Hennessy Louis Vuitton SA an international luxury goods conglomerate so she's not messing around guys not messing around Pune received her, her her doctorate from California Western High School of Law and her BA was from Vanderbilt University. Yeah, this is all her business background. But yeah, so Pune and her business partner, I believe is her husband, um, reached out and took a chance on this kid who was creating, you know, something that was very close to his his heart online. And this was just like a meant to be situation. Incredible. So moving on, slowly and swiftly, so I try my camera again, I can't see any comments, if there's anyone here. Oh, it's so laggy. Oh god. <laughs> Dang it. Oh well. Oh well, voice it is. Okay, so. So yeah, these guys created this empire together, right? Um, And I was kind of thinking about about it in terms of, you know, what we have on Vivi. From an IP standpoint, right? Because he's obviously an artist. But he also has created this brand. He doesn't, like, you know, create... Um, he does create fan art pieces on their own, which which aren't necessarily connected to these brands and IPs. He created individual characters, um, and built these this community of characters around the main character. I feel, or the main type of character. So we got Cactus Friends. I believe these little spiky guys right here. Okay. Donna, Donna. Oh, donut fellows. It's gotta be these guys, right? And then what else we got? Unicorno. We know the unicorns very well. And Mufa. Mermacorno. Death. Death's part. And Longstar. So, team, these guys have developed this whole community. Like, look, when you really dig into this, there are gotta be, like, at least a hundred characters here. When you really look into the detail of everything. Super cool. So, yeah. Moving on to him speaking about, a little bit about his inspiration um, and where where he kind of started. Where all of this passion for Japanese culture um, and design and the, the type of, of design that they love um, when it comes to especially and please can correct me if I'm wrong um, but it's called kawaii it's like that cuteness factor um, and that's something that he kind of was really drawn to and wanted to make his own version of that right so let me see if I can turn on the lo-fi so we can get a bit of leg no Lenyo still saying it wrong, I'm sorry. Lenyo Mr Lenyo Okay, let's see if this will work. Like the uh, my artwork is hidden and you know as every artist it's not easy to speak about my own artwork. I just more let other people uh, interpret it because there is a lot of subconscious things but uh, 
this year like there is a, a big uh, mix up of the, all the things I love and uh, um, maybe like you know, the, the childhood comes from the fact that I love, I love so much Japan and I love so much uh, the, um, the kawaii world and uh, as, a, as a design language. I think it's very cute, always I responded, I always was, was very proud that I like it even if it's not the most rock and roll and the most masculine thing in the world. And then, uh, and then I think that uh, you know, yeah, there is innocence because I think I'm a very more positive person. There is something positive in, uh, like, you know, an artwork that it's um, cute. You know, it just makes you smile, makes you feel positive, and uh, I think that's the thing. And then, uh, you know, being at the dire of my life, there is, uh, you know, I was like 10 years in a punk rock band, and uh, so there is lots of this like icons, tattoos, skeletons. Uh, uh, of punk rock kind of uh, iconography yeah, and that, com yeah, yeah. that comes from there and, and the girls are, you know, when I started the Tokyo Yogi girls that be are behind pretty iconic, uh, um, you know, at first uh, it was because I was going to a Japanese center, I was like uh, studying Japanese, uh, you know, culture in general, like in, I was studying the language, I was watching movies in black and white, I was uh, studying a little bit the um, traditional art of Japan and uh, so when I started to work with the computer, what I wanted to represent them was the, in a modern way, like the Japanese wood prints, where there was like these geishas in kimonos, but I wanted to do it in Illustrator, so like, mm -hmm. with this like still like a very three-dimensional, but very soft lines, the black outline, very pale skin, and uh, very soft and very feminine. Okay. So yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool um, little video to see kind of where he was coming from. And there was another video, and I can't find it for love nor money. Um, he was discussing that as a child, um, there was a lot of um, Japanese cartoons that he would have grown up on in uh, in Milan, I believe in Milan, in Italy. And he watched as a child. He was a super fan of. Um, and just growing up with that type of aesthetic, um, you can really see how that has, that's rubbed off on him. And um, and now, you know, seeing all of his his current artwork, um, you can definitely see there's there's so many sort of crossovers, um, quite a lot of similarities. It's definitely that that very cutesy, um, simplistic uh, character design. Um, and they can have all, you know, they can represent all different types of, of things. So, a good wee video. So we'll jump to the next one. If she's gonna load. Let's see which one it is. But yeah, I, I think that it's, you know, we're getting so many, so many new folks um, on the app when it comes to, to VV nowadays. Like the influx of, of new users is just incredible. And we're getting so many IPs, we're getting so many new types of, of brands and everything. And I think that's kind of been my my goal from the beginning is always to, to look into the artist's history and see where they get their motivations and what their process is like. So um yeah, I'm I'm super glad that I'm sort of finally getting back into um looking into the the artist stories um, and starting at the beginning you know taking a step right back I believe that Simone was the oh come on when of course this is gonna happen guys of course it is um the Simone is one of the first art independent artists that came to Vivi um, oh, you're joking. Oh, come on. Typical, guys. Hello, typical. I'm going to work now. Gonna shut them all down on me. <sighs> Come on, computer. Okay, make it 
rid of these guys that we've already. Maybe. That could be an Help the be pro set. Come on, you can dig her. But yeah, looking into um, some of the OG artists we have, some of the artists that very that decided that they were the ones that were going to take the very first step into this 3D augmented digital situation with Vivi. Um, Simone, I think Simone, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize, Simone um, had uh, the right mindset because of his his history um, and how he's so and so like directly tied into the digital art space, um, whilst also having you know a foot in the in the physical fine art world. Okay, now we got her going. Kind of. And we take a bit of back. But yeah, I think that it was a great example of um, an artist that invites the new and in, is excited about new avenues and, and having his art integrated into to lots of different mediums. And um, that's like it seems to be his, you know, his wheelhouse. So I can imagine. Something like Vivi would just sound like this new, fresh landscape to get involved in, right? And and Simone being the first, I think makes it quite clear that he, you know, he had the the mindset that Vivi was looking for when when it comes to to artists. Yeah, so we'll watch a wee bit of this one. This is kind of him, and I believe this shop is in LA, which is super cool. Um. So yeah, shout out to anybody who's in LA. You should definitely go check out his um, his home base there. Well, friend, we do really everything from uh, sneakers uh, to caps to fashion to collectibles, accessories, a ton of toys. That's one of the things I love the most to design. It's hard to say mm. because I do every sort of categories. One of the characters uh, we are focusing recently is the Mermicorns. Of course. Uh, is a newcomer that came after one of our iconic properties, which is Unicorn. And then uh, Heck yes. uh, mix up in, uh, you know, like a mermaid and a unicorn. And so there is like this marine creature. And then a uh, little bit the inspiration came from the uh, Greek and Roman uh, mythology, where there is, uh, you know, like uh, half horses and half. Uh, fish that are like the, the ride of uh, the Neptune, the god, of, the god of the seas and water. And you know, it's very present in the statues in Rome, which is my hometown. So here we have a few of the um, Mermigorn. Oh, uh, it was it running? I like it. Oh, huge shout out. Okay, obviously we know Simone, Simone for his, his amazing work on the, the Unicornos and the Mermicornos. Huge, huge shout out to Janie of um the omi homies one half of the omi homies are genie um and mrs bickies aka biscuits who have been doing some incredible unboxing um videos of uh, simone's work so definitely go check them out um they're super cute and it's like you get super excited to see um you know what they're gonna pick so yeah shout out to you guys very much I like the colors and I like the hair, hair accessory which is a jellyfish it's nice transparent I like the jellyfish and then I like jellyfish because it's beautiful gentle but it's a sort of a scary kind of creature uh, then this is Cora probably is my favorite as for color because in coral is such a beautiful uh, mm -hmm. this agreed thing. beautiful we think. Is, uh, this one is Topica so everything is like sea related first and I wanted to do something more related to some exotic places where famous for the sea so this one has more this tropical colors and fruitsy kind of a color palette. Shout out to the Mermacono gang! 
Gang, gang. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to the Myrmacorno and Unicorno lovers out there. Because they, you know, they come from their creators. A super, super eclectic. You know, has made so many types of designs. Um, but these are something special about these big guys. Like, you can just pack so much detail into this little tiny package, right? So adorable. So yeah, that was just the kind of, I think I skipped the first part, but kind of wanted to show you guys all of the other things that Simone has put his work to, all the different types of items and all the different um, routes that he has gone down with his business partner in you know, supporting his art form through all these different mediums. It's it's super cool. Okay. Goodbye, Tap. Okay, what's this one? Is this... This is an owner. Okay, so this next video was a really cool find. Um, the way he kind of talks about how he goes about creating his pieces. Um, it's cool to see his, his process. It's a really little quick snip um, of, of, how, of how he gets them from his mind to the page to the screen. And so it's pretty quick. And I think you probably apply this to um, many of his other uh, little sort of very simplified characters. I would imagine that this is this is his format um, for, for making those. Is it gonna work? No, I, mean, I want to do no, a t-shirt with a character. Have like the very basic. So what I do there is uh, I take my phone and uh, I use this as a scanner. I just simply send it to myself. I just need the uh, the proportions. Uh, take the image, I paste it, and block it. It just stays there, doesn't move, and then uh, just start to trace it, illustrate it. Like See? The way you can just take that image from the page to the screen. Super cool, man. That's all. Working uh, with computer, working from the sketch to computer, it gives you an effect uh, and uh, uh, production capabilities that, uh, you know, like the hand painting doesn't give you. Because, you know, like the perfection that gives you working uh, uh, with vectors, you will never have it by human hand. I think two are two different uh, ways of uh, express um, yourself as an artist, and but they are completely different and, uh, and are just fantastic to be able to use both of them. So 90% of times on product, uh, I will work uh, using my sketches that will be retransformed using uh, Adobe Illustrator. The most of product uh, we do or in general is done is using seal screening uh, both on apparel and or on toys. So when you do a toy, the, for the production you have to take your character and... Uh... Yeah, just before we go on to the rest of this, um, I think that's a really cool point that he has expressed there about the production time and and how quickly you're able to turn around a character such as like uh, and design from design to completion it's much quicker obviously there's not as much detail involved um so 
so you're able to turn around these ideas much faster. But when it comes to the, the fine art that uh, Simone does, he says it's a different, very different type of expression. It's not something that can be turned around um, anywhere near as quick. Because um, you really have to take that time to, you know, perfect uh, everything. And you kind of just get one go. Well, not necessarily. You don't get one go, but, you know, you get one one real smash at a painting whereas something you, you do on Illustrator or something that you can do on Photoshop you're able to go back and, and make little tweaks and, and change things um, how you would want them so so yeah I think that's that's a really great point that and I'm sure that pulls very different um, pulls on uh, Simone very differently like how, and how he feels about creating the the characters versus the um versus the more time consuming fine art pieces whether it's in watercolor or acrylic or or oils or whatever he chooses to use and he said about silk screening as well um so yeah that's super cool that he's able to exercise these different creative talents you know that he has in in different ways so yeah, I think he's going to go on to like talking about the the actual process of getting your character from, you know, on the page to the screen and then now into the 3D world. In all the positions, like from the back, side, the top, and there is a sculptor that uh, try to, with clay, uh, he makes what uh, what's your concept and uh, he starts to send you pictures and then uh, I go in Photoshop and change to change this, move this here, move that there. And they start to send you um, hand painted so temporary colors and uh, all the decorations are not uh, a final season screening but are sort of decals that are almost back here. You approve it, the position of the print. Sometimes you think no this eyes should be you know one millimeter because one millimeter can really really change. So yeah, I was just saying there about how um, you get you go from having a 2D piece on screen and then having to draw it the front, the side, the back, from the top, from all sorts of views, so that a sculptor is then able to bring these creation these creations into 3D existence. Um, yeah like like what the girls are unboxing and what a lot of you guys you lucky lucky guys uh who attended designer con this year were gifted with a bunch of these little murmur cornos um uh, which we're now able to pair up with uh on vivi so that's super cool can i just quickly for all of our um investigatory type detective sherlock holmes you guys see this little guy up here this little figure right here I believe if my memory serves me right that David Yu has one of these guys in his museum I believe it's in it's like in a in a case so I, I would not have said uh, Simone would have been the one to create those but guys let us know in the comments. Somebody find out who this is or on Twitter. Probably your best on Twitter. But yeah. So I thought this was cool to kind of see. Um, I'll break it down into his fine fine art stuff a little bit in a minute. But we've got the sculpture side of things, the 2D creator side of things, the original um, sketch artist side of him. Um, and researching, find he also has done some mural work which is super cool like when I think about murals now I kind of think to Tristan Eaton um, and some of his really incredible work um, in New York and all over America but yeah we also have a muralist right here guys so I'm gonna get rid of this one and see if this will work for us The Japanese animation was very influential, so when I grew up in the 80s, I could watch from morning to night. It was just everywhere. And oh. in an era where there is enough internet, 
TV was what really was exposing me to that world and that's how it started uh, my Japanese influence in my artwork. Being here in uh, Power Guam uh, was a wonderful experience for me. Being able like to wake up every morning and uh, you know just like uh, splash uh, colors on a wall, um, it made me feel very free. Being in the middle of other artists is uh, very exciting. Uh, it's very encouraging. You see that everybody has a different vision. Everybody here is very supportive of each other. There is a very good spirit. Art is everything. It's uh, self-expression. It's the way I am. I think being an artist uh, is a privilege. Mm. And I'm lucky to have talent that I can uh, show a different of reality to people. Mm. Check that out, man. Yeah, Armand Simone also does beautiful mural work. Again, incorporating all of these characters that he had, he's worked with um, and created over the years. Um, and amongst um, this other character that we also have um, on video. the character, I think he calls her the influencer. I think. Oh, come on. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. These spin wheels of death will be the death of me. But yes, here we go. Check that out. Check that out. And you can see all of these characters. So this, the murals for me are kind of where his IP art. So like all of these little cutesy cutesy guys. The Unicornos, the Marmacornos, the Donut Angelos, the Cactus Friends. Um, they all sort of meet with this woman here. This is somebody that Simone has been painting into his pieces for some time and I think he has described her as like his muse so she's the one that um, we see as the iconic dragon girl um, on Vivi which is one of my favourite pieces for sure I've been saying that since day dot it's the like the common and the uncommon it's the colourways that are just stunning dude that the, the detail um, that that he put into those and you know they're some of the most detailed pieces from way back um, so yeah it's it's super cool to see him like merge these two different sides to himself the fine art and the IP together in these pieces um, and he also has transferred that to his fine art piece where she is definitely the focus she is the like your eye is just automatically drawn to her um, in most of his pieces I believe this is one example go to this guy this is one example if it's gonna work excuse me yes there she is these the art side of some magno is much I find like it's much softer also has this like real cityscape to it. Um, she's always the focus of his pieces, but you can see, you can spot in the background. You have some cactus friends up here. I've got some unicornos right over here. But the scenes he paints with her in them are like much more realistic, right? It's like her kind of moving through where she lives, probably Japan. Um, on the train, subway, and he pay I find that I was looking at a bunch of his um, pieces of her, and it's he sort of painted her like he's taken her or something, like snapshots of her, um, just going about her life, and in lots of different scenarios. Um, if it is. From the influencer perspective, I think 
a pretty cool a cool way to look at it like he's you know there's her when like taking her videos on the train and again over here but then there's her when she's at home jammies check out the cactus friend and definitely second to the to her to the influencer she is the main the main part of his, his picture when it comes to mine art and I'm so god apologies for my flip and loading circle of death but I love this I love his style it's much softer um than the IP pieces. Looks like watercolor. I could be wrong, this is me sort of surmising. Um, but yeah. His work is, is wonderful. And seeing him and how he can frame this woman in so many different scenarios. You know, it's gonna be challenging having one character the one sort of very typically human character and trying to portray her in as many different ways as you can in as many different like life situations and like this is beautiful this tiger one right here so yeah let me see This work is just so bright and it's so vibrant, it just jumps off the page in a, you know, in a very simple decorated room. Something like this, can you imagine? Like the pop of colour that this provides. And yeah, these are just some of his other pieces, like this um, lifestyle, lifestyle more brand stuff, not particularly um, heavy on the the art side, um, but these are more much more accessible prices to be able to own um, a piece of piece of art from this um, from this artist. And what is this one? Oh yes, and this is the OG. I think I'm gonna end on this, um, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I haven't been able to see the live chat. I'm gonna have to try another um another program. Maybe try tomorrow, see how it goes. But yeah, haven't been able to see any comments. I love you guys. If anybody's here, I can't even I can't see if anybody's here right now. I can see a couple oh, I can see a couple of comments. Fancy fingers, beyond the fan, cray mountain. Uh, Chumble and Bickies, what's the crack? So yeah, guys, thank you for tuning in. This was I did have my camera up and it was it was laggy as laggy AF. So I just ditched her and uh, I'm going for the voiceover. <laughs> See how this goes. But yeah, um, this is ending. I think I'm gonna end this video on on Dragon Girl, the original OG. Uh, she represents so much on BB, right? For so many of us. Some of the first art pieces that we had. Um, and yeah, I think the Unicornos are definitely, obviously they're more IP heavy, but I think Dragon Girl was the first um, true art piece that we had presented to us on, on BB. And I would love to see this as um, a 2D art piece on its own. Like, look at the texture here. I think this this definitely looks like acrylic or oil because it just looks so textured. I want to reach out and touch her headband. And here, like, it's just amazing. Just amazing. So yeah, 
I want to end it up here, wrap it up with Dragon Girl. Um, and I hope I kind of give you a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a scope, I guess, on where Simone, Simone, oh Simone, his name's not Simone, his name is Simone Lenyo. Hi Simone, started, and where he, where he first got, um, first got his, his passion and interest for this type of art, this style of art, um, doing it in as most respectable way as possible and giving props to, you know, where this, this art truly and originally came from, which I think is very important. Um, so props to you, Simone, for, for doing that. Um, yeah, and seeing your progression through, through the sketch to the screen, to the modeling, to the wall, to the huge canvas, and then onto apparel and, you know, all of these other all of these other um, forms of, of these other bl blank canvases, I guess, that he's been able to utilize for his art. So, yeah, super exciting, super pumped. Thank you guys for listening. Um, I'm gonna wrap it up and I'm gonna give it another go, maybe with another artist tomorrow, we'll see. Um, but yeah, appreciate you. I'll watch it back, see how it goes. Um, and please look into him yourself. Always encouraging. You know, this is just... This is just... Uh, always scratching the surface with videos of any type. So so please go and um, support these artists in your own way and do your research. And um, yeah. Thank you guys for joining. I will definitely be doing this again. So I hope you guys will stop by then and yeah.